Greetings, everyone, and welcome to a Fright Night Friday Blu-ray update. Yeah, I picked up a few new movies for the horror collection and thought we'd take a look at them today on the Multimedia Chronicles. <laughs> Welcome back. Alrighty, first up, this is one that I have been waiting to see get the deluxe treatment on Blu-ray for a very, very long time. Uh, we did have a Blu-ray release not even a year ago from Mill Creek that uh, I know a lot of folks picked up because it was the first time we actually got this uh, classic movie on Blu-ray. And then it was announced for the Criterion Collection, so everyone was like, ah, okay, I guess we're double dipping. <laughs> and well worth it, too, apparently, because uh, this one was actually sourced from the original uh, negatives, I believe. It was a whole new transfer and uh, stuff, whereas the, um, the Mill Creek one was, was from other prints that weren't as high a quality, I guess. Anyway, I'm, of course, talking about Night of the Living Dead. Yes, the, the classic, uh, well, I hesitate to say zombie movie because technically it's not zombies it's the living dead uh slightly different but anyway um for lack of a you know semantics or whatever we'll just say the the one that kick-started the zombie genre essentially um yeah great great movie of course as uh, those of you who've been watching for a while know i have the elite entertainment laserdisc edition that was released many many years ago and uh for a long time it was the definitive edition uh there was of course the millennium edition released on dvd which was essentially the dvd version of that laserdisc set had all the same contents was from the same print and everything so this is the first time uh, we've basically got that caliber of a release on blu-ray and long overdue as well so if we uh, just take a look on the back it's absolutely loaded with extras uh, let me just uh, quickly read read off the contents here for you. Um, th and this has some pretty cool uh, stuff as well that we've not seen before. So first off, we have a new 4K digital restoration supervised by director George A. Romero, co-screenwriter John A. Russo, sound engineer Gary R. Streiner, and producer Russell W. Streiner. New restoration of the Monorail soundtrack supervised by Romero and Gary Streiner and presented uncompressed. Uh, this one's really cool. Night of Anubis, a never-before-presented work, uh, work print edit of the film. So we got an alternate, like an earlier cut of the film that is never before seen. That's pretty damn cool. That alone should be worth the price of admission for most of you. Uh, new program featuring filmmakers Frank Darabont, Guillermo del Toro, and Robert Rodriguez. Never-before-seen 16mm dailies reel. A new program featuring Russo... Uh, on the commercial and industrial film production company where the key Night of the Living Dead filmmakers got their start. Two audio commentaries from 1994 featuring Romero, Russo, producer, Car producer Carl Hardman, actor Judith O'Day, and others. Archival interviews with Romero and actors Dwayne Jones and Judith Ridley. New programs about the film's style and score. New interview program about the direction of Ghouls featuring members of the cast and crew. New interviews with Gary Striner and Russell Striner. Newsreels from 1967. Trailer, radio spots, TV spots, and an essay by critic Stuart Clowens. So, very cool. This is, I mean, this is definitely giving it the royal treatment here, as, as Criterion often does with their releases. So, basically just, uh, you know, standard sort of digi, digipack uh, slip cover there. And if we take a look, we actually have wraparound artwork for the uh, packaging. And then inside, it's essentially a, uh, a digipack with the, uh, the discs aren't stacked. They actually don't touch each other. But, uh, you know, the, the, this kind of overlaid digipack that uh, I'm sure you've seen before. And we get a poster. Let's just uh, open this up here. Very nice poster. So, yeah, there we go. So that's the, uh, of course, the iconic image of the, of the little girl after she's turned. And then on the back of that, that's where we have the essay uh, mentioned in the extras. So a very, very cool collection there indeed. And uh, sure to delight any fan of the film. 
yeah, I've always really loved this film. It scared the crap out of me as a kid, and uh, I still find it quite chilling and effective today. Just a fantastic movie. Next up, um, I was really late to this party uh, until I picked up the uh, relatively inexpensive uh, re-release of the uh, of the original seven movies, uh, which I have now since watched a few times. Actually, I really enjoyed this series a lot. As convoluted and ridiculous as it gets, as it goes, I don't care. It's all good fun uh, if you can stomach all the blood and guts. Um, so when I heard they were doing a new one after the seventh one was supposedly the last, uh, naturally I had to pick it up. I'm of course talking about Jigsaw or Decadence, La Heritage. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. It's time to play again. So this uh, this has a really nice uh, slipcover. I don't know if you can sort of see the texture on it there, but it's nice, uh, nice texture on the cover there. And then inside, it's basically just your standard Blu-ray keep case with the clipper thing on the side. We're gonna do that. Oh, digital copy. We'll just set that aside, and then uh, and then of course we have the disc with the sort of saw um, design on it. Quite nice. So, very cool. Uh, I've not watched this yet. Um, I will get around to it eventually. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, as I say, I, I always really enjoyed the Saw series. Um, I was quite late to it, as I mentioned. Um, I, I didn't actually see any of them until I picked up that 7 movie collection. The 7 movie collection was ridiculously cheap. It was like 20 bucks or something. And uh, I think I actually paid more for this new release movie than I did for the seven movie collection. So, <laughs> yeah, I guess sometimes it just pays to wait. But uh, anyway, next up, uh, you guys may have seen a video that was all of maybe five or ten seconds long that I posted a while back showing the lenticular slipcover of this one. Um, I picked up the British sci-fi, or the British, well, I don't want to say sci-fi, the British, British uh, post-apocalyptic film Threads, which uh, I really enjoyed a lot. So we could sort of take a look here. I'll see if there you can see the uh, the slipcover there. Yeah, that video that I posted just showing the slipcover was literally filmed with my cell phone. I just quickly did it to show the lenticular artwork and then uh, went from there. Now there have been some complaints about this. Apparently, uh, supposedly the original film was actually shot at 25 frames per second, matching the British. Uh, film frame rate um i was under the impression that film could not run at that speed but apparently i was mistaken so my apologies to those of you who attempted to correct me on that and i may have been a bit of a dick to you about it i i don't know it's just human nature to not like to be wrong about things and uh well sometimes i'm wrong about things anyway so apparently it was originally filmed at 25 frames per second uh this blu-ray runs at 24 frames per second so there was some complaints about the speed now in watching it i, I mean the last version i saw of this was the original pal sort of television version um because i have the the region 2 dvd um and all versions i'd seen of it before had been in pal format but uh, but this one, I mean, I watched it as soon as I got it, basically, because I think this film is just absolutely amazing, and it's just as powerful now as when it was released 30-plus years ago. But um, uh, I didn't notice any problems. I didn't have any issues with it, but I, I haven't done a side-by-side -side comparison. So a lot of people were complaining based on the discrepancy in running time between this version and the uh, original televised version and I guess the PAL DVD version. So this one runs a couple minutes longer, indicating that it's been slowed down to the um, to accommodate the 24 frames per second frame rate. So I don't know what to tell you. Uh, supposedly there's a, a Region B version on the way that actually does present it in the correct 25 frames per second. But I don't know. I, I didn't really have any issues with this, but uh, I might check out the other one anyway, just because this is one I don't mind double dipping on because it's a fantastic film and uh, one that I will always enjoy. Um, so special features, this is audio commentary with director Mick Jackson, moderated by film writer Kier, uh, Kier La Janice and Severn Films' David Gregory. Uh, audition for the Apocalypse, interview with actress Karen Meager. Shooting the Annihilation, interview with director of photography Andrew Dunn. Destruction Designer, interview with production designer Christopher Rob Robillard. Rob Robillard, French last name. Uh, and and in interview with film writer Stephen Thrower and the... U.S. trailer. So 
Uh, a very cool addition. I grabbed this on uh, pre-order, basically. I, I rarely pre-order things, but this one uh, has always kind of been special to me. So I uh, I grabbed it on pre-order so I could get the cool lenticular slipcover. So it, uh, yeah. There, there is a regular edition that does not come with it. It's a couple bucks less. I guess while we're doing extras, let's see what's uh, what's on here. On uh, Jigsaw, we've got I Speak for the Dead, The Legacy of J Jigsaw, seven-part documentary. So there you go. So I guess it covers the previous seven movies. Uh, the Choice is Yours, Exploring the Props, and Audio Commentary with Producers Mark Berg, Oren Cools, and Peter Block. All righty. Now, last, but most certainly not least... This is a horror movie franchise that, for no apparent reason, I have completely overlooked for pretty much my entire life. Um, I'd only seen bits and pieces of the first one. Uh, the only ones I had seen in full were the ninth one and the eleventh one. Yeah, this is a long franchise. But fans seem to generally be of the consensus that numbers one through eight are the only real ones, and the ones that follow kind of pale in comparison and poop all over the legacy. I am, of course, talking about the one major 80s horror franchise that I've waited far too long to see. I am finally making up for that. Friday the 13th. Yes. Can you believe I've never seen any of these? <laughs> That's not entirely true. When I was a kid, I did see bits and pieces of the first one. When it was airing on television, I was over at a relative's place. And one of my uncles, every time it would get to one of the gory bits, he would change the channel just before the kill or just before the, <laughs> the machete hit or whatever. And um, so... Of course, that that has the opposite effect. When you when you prevent a child from seeing the horror, the horror they come up with in their minds to fill in the blanks is far worse than what was actually on screen. So for the first time in my life, I finally saw what happened at the end. Uh, just to give you some example, is uh, at the end. Spoiler alert, for those of you who like me have hadn't seen it. Um, but at the end, when the, the heroine is, I guess it was Amy, Annie, I don't know, the, the, the hero girl at the end is, uh, is having her final battle with Mrs. Voorhees, and she, there's that slow motion shot where she comes at her with the machete, and then swings it, and then beheads her. Well, in the, <laughs> when I saw it as a kid, you get out to the city, she's coming at her with, she's coming at her with the machete, and just before it hits, click, change the channel. And I'm like, oh, well, so, of course, my eight-year-old imagination was just reeling and uh, filled in far too many blanks. And uh, what, what happened in my head was way worse than what was actually on screen. So now, finally, like 30-plus years later, I finally saw what actually happened. And, yeah, actually, what I'd been imagining all these years was way gorier than what was actually on screen. Anyway, needless to say, I've been having an absolute blast watching these and finally getting to see the legacy of Jason unfold. And also to see all of the, the sort of horror movie cliches and tropes, like where they began. Um, it, it, it's funny watching these now kind of in hindsight because... Uh, so many like like this franchise was so influential on horror that it introduced so many things that have since become cliches so one has to kind of keep in mind the historical context when watching the originals uh now in that at the time when these movies came out they weren't cliches yet this is the first time those things ever happened so it's uh, it, it's been a lot of fun to watch and kind of see that chapter of horror history that ha ha I've been sadly lacking all this time. And uh, yeah, it's it's been a blast. So I just actually just today at the time that I'm filming this uh, uh, update, I just finished watching the fourth one. And um, yeah, the, the so-called final chapter, which of course we know wasn't. But, uh, yeah, so definitely looking forward to seeing where it goes from there. All righty. Well, that is it for this update. Uh, not, not a lot, I guess. Well, four, four titles, but uh, 
uh, what is it, 11 movies. Um, oh, in case you're wondering what extras, this is not bare bones. Uh, this is kind of a similar to release, release, I guess, to the Saw set that I mentioned before. Uh, this one is a little more expensive. I think I paid 40 bucks for it. You can probably find it online for a little bit less. Um, I just grabbed it when I saw it at Sunrise Records and uh, thought, yeah, I think it's about time I, I filled in that gap in my personal horror uh, pantheon. Um, but it does have a lot of extras on it. Like every movie has extras with it, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm assuming it's basically the same discs that were in the, uh, the, uh, 10 movie set that was released a few years ago. Uh, the only thing is it's missing, uh, uh, obviously nine and 10, which were the ones after it switched from Paramount to new line. Um, and, uh, I think there was an additional bonus disc that was in the, the tin set that, uh, that this does not have, but all of the extras that were on the movie discs for the individual movies, as far as I know, these are exactly the same discs that were in that set. So you know, there's still quite a lot of, uh, stuff to sink your teeth into there. So, yeah, so outside of that tin set that is now long out of print and ridiculously expensive, uh, I don't think there's any other way to get nine and 10 on blu-ray it's only available on dvd so i'm probably just going to grab the cheap ass dvd double feature set just to have those in the collection in the meantime and then of course there's the documentaries uh, jason uh, sorry his name was jason and crystal lake memories and then of course there's the 2009 remake as well so um yeah so definitely going to pick up all of those at some point in the foreseeable future for now enjoying seeing the original eight films in all their iconic glory and having an absolute blast with them uh, so far the first four i gotta say were pretty consistently excellent like pretty much all on par with each other i think um it's been fun also seeing the the various uh people who would go on to greater fame later uh, appearing in there like the first one of course had strapping young kevin bacon uh the the fourth one had uh, uh crispin glover and uh and cory feldman looking like he was about eight uh he was actually like 12 or 13 but uh uh yeah so it's been interesting seeing a lot of these actors who uh of course we recognize from things they did later kind of getting their feet wet with uh you know T tangling with jason <laughs> anyway um that is it for this update hope you enjoyed we'll see you again next time for whatever the the next one is um i tend to film these videos out of sequence so i don't like to say what's coming up next because that may change by the time i post them so whatever's next enjoy it all righty that is it for me to you for now so big thanks to you for watching big thanks to my patreon sponsors and until next time sayonara